Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is a beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning. It is probably upper 60s, it feels like. Perfect for me to jump on this project back behind me. I'm gonna come out here, excavate for what's gonna be the beginning of a beautiful front yard pondless waterfall. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Our biggest request is that it looks like it's been here forever. It looks good whether it's running or not running. So rock work is gonna be really, really important. She wants it to look just immaculate. She's gonna take over with the landscaping. She's obviously got a green thumb because this wildflower bed in front of the house is incredible. She does have a pond in the back pond. Chris built a few years ago. It looks gorgeous, it's spotless, and she wants just a taste of water in the front yard. And the way I described it to her is bird love. She's looking for a little bit more width, not crazy amounts of water flow, really gentle, just interactive for birds and uh, wildlife, butterfly. Butterfly loving is probably even a better way. So let me show you what we're doing real quick and uh, we'll get started. So our biggest obstacle are gonna be roots from this guy right here. We got a river birch here. They tend to put out a lot of roots and some thick roots at times too. The other thing we've got is a buried Comcast line. They're almost 100% positive that there's no cable TV running through here. They think it's dog fence. I'm just not sure that the utility locators mark dog fence. I think they mark cable TV line. So I've gone ahead and started digging. I didn't see anything yet. I'm going to continue to hand dig, see if I can't locate that because I would really like to put my reservoir right there. We have a nine block reservoir going in and at 30 gallons a block, that'll give us 270, almost 300 gallons of water, which is perfect. They didn't want to do something totally winter running, just enough that they didn't have to add water all the time. They have no problem bringing a garden hose out here and occasionally topping it off. And if it needs to run dry, so be it, because they want it beautiful when it's dry or wet. And so the rock, again, that rock work is going to be really important as we come in through here. Not worried about building it up at all. In fact, to keep with the more natural look, which I'm so glad she's on the same page with me, really don't bring it up any higher than the height of the driveway back there. A slight berm would be okay, but we're talking inches, not feet. 12 inches tall over here would look out of place and so I want to really just kind of make it look like it's been here forever and the driveway height was set based off of an existing waterfall kind of coming through what looks to be a natural wetland back over and through here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. My goal today is because I'm by myself is really just to kind of get the reservoir in. Our rocks are going to show up. We'll get those rocks unloaded, get those things staged where I can get to them relatively easy and then tomorrow finish this baby up. Wish me luck. Here I go. Some really, really cool rock. Way more rock than I need, but I always, always order extra, especially on something where the customer is so focused on the detail of the stone. I want extra. I'd rather haul stuff away. I want the selection to make sure everything just matches perfectly. Um, in fact, she even came out and was a little overwhelmed by how much stone, and I had to reassure her that, hey, we're just gonna use what we need to, but I want that selection. And there's some really cool pieces. Like, let me show you some of these. This piece, I love. I saw it at the stone yard. It's got a little bowl in it. Well, 100% get water to kind of trickle into that just so birds can kind of sit and drink from there. I look at this big rock here. I can tell that the bottom of this is nice and flat. I see all the imperfections in the bottom too. So if I flip that thing over, it's going to give her that kind of trickle waterfall, not that big veil of water. If I look at a rock like this one over here, this one would almost sit exactly the way it's sitting. This is the top. We've got that natural high spot, low spot, low spot. So I can kind of bring some other rocks into here and maybe get water to come that way or this way. We'll see how it works. And then I look at this one here. And these are all things that I look at like at the stone yard. I look at this one here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like this big natural cave kind of concave curve into the stone. Flat here, flat on the top. That all in itself is a waterfall. I just set that all by itself. Water will look like it kind of eroded away that curve into the stone. And then some of these big guys, of course, are way out of scale, but I always sink them down like a third of the way down. So I've got the selection I need 
made with the big ones. Some accent boulders can go on the back side into the wildflower area there and help tie it all together. We will probably haul away at least two of these pallets. And then this stuff over here is really just for fill. And we'll probably haul away 50% of that stuff. So there's the footprint of the reservoir. That gives me three blocks going this way, three blocks going that way. So again, nine total full aqua blocks, roughly about 300 gallons of water. A new French drain was put in right through here. So I'm gonna set the top of my reservoir probably a good six inches lower than that grade there. If there's extra water, allowing this to actually accept some of that extra water. We'll have to do some tricks with the edges to make sure we don't get all kinds of soil runoff and that kind of stuff in there. But if mother nature can occasionally top this off during a heavy rain, great. The width of it too, going this way rather than long this way, allows for that wider waterfall kind of coming in. Maybe do a split, maybe do this, maybe do that. I don't know, just it gives me a lot more flexibility with the width. Uh, the key is gonna be blending this rock right in with that rock and then swinging some rock out in this way without it looking too rocky. So here we go, next step, dig, dig, dig. the hole has been excavated aqua blocks are in liner is in fabric is in fabric liner fabric you guys know the routine fabric underneath everything protects the liner from the rocky soil conditions underneath then liner then another piece of fabric on top to cushion the any sharp corners of the aqua blocks now we're getting ready for backfill one thing i tried to hide from you guys but noticed that it was already in the camera view was this area right here sometimes things happen this is actually cable tv line so we cut off all the cable that way so everybody that way which is about 20 houses lost cable for about an hour which isn't the worst thing you know like take some time go outside enjoy the day right <laughs> listen to the birds or the lawn mowers <laughs> okay, so now we're ready to backfill we've got our nine aqua blocks in here we're gonna backfill this side then we're gonna backfill this side then we'll do the other sides and then we get to start building a beautiful looking waterfall here we go everybody it is day two we are out here in long grove illinois and we are doing good this morning it's friday it's brian's birthday so i know it's gonna come out a little bit later but feel free to wish brian a happy birthday right now down in the comments i know he'll appreciate it let me spin you guys around and show you what we accomplished so jack is sitting right on our waterfall stones we got our waterfall rocks in so the one that he's sitting on is actually our weir stone so that's gonna be our waterfall rock and then we have this frame rock here another frame rock over here it's gonna be a lot of action going on at this point it's gonna look awesome i mean it, it's gonna look really cool and this waterfall is strictly for curb appeal. This waterfall faces away from the house, kind of goes against of what we normally do on get the waterfalls towards the house, but this homeowner was specific and wanted something so our neighbors can enjoy and all the people that go down this busy road, which is funny because this is actually a dead end street and there is a decent amount of traffic. I mean, we were out here yesterday and there was a decent amount of traffic coming down this way. So we're gonna knock some of this brush down, get a few rocks in here just to tie in this entire area. So it looks like this waterfall was here before they put this drainage swale in and that this basin kind of just overflows into that drainage swell. So Jack right now is getting the plumbing in. We're getting our basin filled up. We have that corner excavated. We're going to get a rock down here for a wing wall, firm up some dirt back behind that. And then we're going to get probably two more rocks down in this basin. And then we're going to rock this basin and kind of work our way from the bottom up out of here. That way we can keep cruising along. So there's only a few more rocks that we have to set. This waterfall is going to look super simple and it's going to look awesome. I cannot wait. I know I always say awesome. I know my mom gives me uh she watches these videos and I know she always says about how much I say awesome. So let's get a count on how many times I say it throughout this video. Alrighty, 
Jack, explain to me what you're doing. We got a little bit more stuff done since the last time I checked in with you guys. We got our entire basin rocked in. This is all done. We got our light in, we got our pump in, our plumbing in. Everything is checked off our list basin-wise. We moved up here into our waterfalls. So what we did up here is, considering that she didn't want such a big pooling area and such a big berm on top, we have to be very subtle so we can't really have a super tall rocks. So we're only working with two waterfalls right here. And who wants to see two waterfalls? That's just boring. We want to have more water. And so that's exactly what we did. So we're going to have our top pulling area is going to be up here. It's not going to be very big. It's only going to be maybe like a foot by a foot, maybe a little bit bigger. But water is going to pull up and well in this area, flowing off this rock, dumping into here, and then flowing over this rock here. What we also did is back here, if you look at this, and there's a nub back here. And one of our plan of attack is, is we set it level with the rock that I'm sitting on right now. So that way, when the water wells up, it's going to split over this rock and this rock here. So we're going to take another rock. We're going to get it choked up into here. And that way we can dictate how much water flows down into this area here. Now you guys might wonder, how the heck are we going to do that? What we're going to do is, is we're going to grab another rock. We have one rock over there. We're going to dig it down and we're going to have it come down into this area here. So we're going to get pretty much the top of that rock sitting right here at this height. So that way we can get a bunch of water welling up into this area and then coming down into this area, crashing, dumping. And that way you can see this waterfall from the street. And that's where our viewing area is from. Like I mentioned earlier, this waterfall is purely for curb appeal. And so they want all their neighbors to see it. And, and the so, mailman. And the mailman. Don't forget the mailman. Or the Amazon delivery guy, you know, because Amazon's pretty big. So we're going to have a nice waterfall come down here, splitting around this rock here. And it does look, you guys might not notice it, but for us, we notice that this rock is super tall. I mean, we don't like to have more than a couple inches of our frame rock sticking above our waterfall rock. And so what we're going to do to disguise that is we're going to set a big rock that's going to be pretty big in size and it's going to scale it down. It's going to sit back behind here, choking down this waterfall and that's going to be feeding this waterfall here. So hopefully I explained it pretty well. I know it's kind of hard for you guys to envision it right now with no rocks in there, but once we get the waterfall running, we will go through this more in depth on what we were talking about. So stay tuned. All right, so with this waterfall down here, I talked about earlier about this waterfall, but dumping down into this pooling area, we're gonna have a giant big bib liner, how we normally do it, where we're gonna take, fill this up with gravel, put our layer of foam down and then a piece of fabric, and that way it's gonna dictate where we want the water. So in this area here, we wanted to get water coming off this rock here and not just here because we want water coming off everywhere. So what we did is right here is that we choked this guy down. So that way it forces all that water to come along here. Now, normally what we'd like to do is we would have water coming down into this area here. But if you were to do that, we wouldn't see that waterfall from the street. You will only be able to see this waterfall from where that wheelbarrow is at, right next to Jack. So what we did is we're gonna take this rock, however it fits nicely in here, we're gonna have it kind of sit something like this. So that way that water is gonna channel its way out through here and make this rock more of like a weeping wall type deal where it's just gonna kind of drip over the side and with it being in shade, it's gonna probably create a lot of moss. So it's gonna create a really cool effect out in here. It's not just gonna be a huge waterfall. That's what this rock is for. This one's gonna be more of like a weeping style, drippy style waterfall. So hopefully that explains and we will show you guys as the time lapse progresses, what we mean by that. kind of go time. We are slapping the final rocks up in our spillway up top. We got our spillway in. Pipe is connected. Pipe is ran. We are sent some retaining wall stones. Ryan is coming back behind us furiously and he is doing all of our bibs which is really nice because it's kind of time consuming and it's nice. Heat, we can put that to bed and not worry about that. So it's turned out awesome. We got all our waterfall rocks in. So what I was talking about earlier, see how we have this rock. This rock is framing out this waterfall here and this waterfall. So there's going to be a little bit of a chunk coming down. There's going to be a bunch of water, like a ribbon style waterfall coming into this pulling area here. So as you guys can tell now that rock doesn't look so far out of proportionate considering that there is that rock there and then you have that big flat one back behind it that scales it all down. So we are on go mode and we're doing good. So stay tuned and we should be finishing up pretty soon. just about a wrap we're just setting a couple extra boulders you remember all of those boulders sitting along there they're all sitting in here we did get one back over in here got a couple accents that last big one's gonna go over there but it's amazing how seven tons of rock just disappears and I'm loving the way it looks even with the green buckets it looks pretty great you can see joints are pretty tight in through here most of the water is gonna come off here we did get a little tributary thing that's gonna come in through there I can't wait to show you guys this thing completely finished. It was a ton of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. Can't wait to show you it running.
Well, we are finally done with this project. It took us a total of 50 to 55 man hours on this project to wrap this thing up. Let me spin you guys around like I always say and show you guys what we accomplished. So as you guys can tell, we came in here. All it is was a drainage swale. All this grass extended all the way from over here all the way through to the end of the driveway, all the way over there. So we came in, uh, we're at seven tons of stone, a two to five pump, and this pump's only running on 3,000 gallons right now. A customer said that was the perfect, they didn't want to go any more or any less. So we kept it at this. I love this drippy effect coming off this rock over here. But this system has three three watt lights, a 300 gallon reservoir, 60 watt transformer, and a two to five pump. And that's about it. And a 12 inch spillway sitting up top feeding this Thomas waterfall. So super simple. This is one of the smallest pumps that we've used all year. It's two to five pump and like I said earlier it's only running on 3,000 gallons per hour so it turned out amazing I love the drippy effect like I said earlier and I love how you're getting two waterfalls off this big wide stone here so it looks awesome unfortunately we weren't able to get any water coming off this here but you can't even tell that there was supposed to be a waterfall there unless I pointed out to you guys earlier in the video so it turned out awesome really love how this turned out pretty much only a day and a half it took us to do this yesterday Brian was out here digging the reservoir doing some minor things and then the rest of us came out here and buttoned this feature up so crew did an amazing job jack did an amazing job like always as you guys know please like comment and subscribe this video and please don't forget to come back on every tuesdays thursdays and sundays for a team aquascape video so you can see my face jack's face the birthday boy brian's face dan Luis, chris z and udi so hopefully you guys have a good day goodbye